Chapter 8, Jesus Hates a Pussy, August 1st, 2002. Five days after two broke, we got an invitation to meet Bad Bob at the Mesa Clubhouse. Bob expected us at 9 p.m. We decided to meet at a church parking lot in Gilbert, Arizona, a former town that had been engulfed by Phoenix's insatiable sprawl. Pops, Carlos, Timmy, and I were about as close as we could be to shitting our pants. Two broke felt like it had taken place months ago. Meeting the angels in a tent outside during the day wasn't the same as riding our bikes into the driveway at 153 South LeBron, kicking down unassing and walking right into their cinder block stronghold. At night, I felt certain we were setting ourselves up. I thought our game might be too tight and imagined Rudy was a tweaker, dickhead, cop hater who wanted to see us all smoked. We knew it didn't take much for a UC to end up as dead as Elvis. If we'd miscalculated or been too brash, we'd be gone before we could finish saying, Mr. Hell's Angel, sir, it's an honor to. Sure, the cover team would storm in a few minutes later, but they'd only be able to even the score, hose our brains off the wall, and snap some tags on our toes. We sat around a picnic table under a mesquite tree waiting for Rudy. The sun was down, but the desert twilight lingered. Pops and I smoked like twin furies. It was August in Arizona, and the sweat sealed our solo cuts to our torsos like second skins. I had my Glocks, and Carlos and Timmy each carried Beretta 380s. Pops had a Smith & Wesson five-shot revolver. It's basically forbidden to arm an informant, even a paid one like Pops. But I trusted him, and I was unwilling to put him in harm's way without a means of defending himself. I flipped, closed, flipped, closed my Zippo. Carlos popped gum. Pops talked to his wife on his cell. Timmy just sat there, calm as a lizard on a rock. Bastard. Rudy pulled in. He revved his engine, fired down, and he didn't have a gun. Pops was a friend. Rudy was a means to an end. He was still a convicted felon with revoked gun rights. Sorry I'm late. He didn't sound sorry. I didn't care. I said, no worries. We got time. Timmy said, all right. Rudy unwrapped a soft pack of reds, bit off the foil, and shook out a smoke. I lit for him. We didn't say any. We didn't say anything. Then Rudy said, okay, I'm in charge when we're inside. Don't forget it. You step on my toes, and the show's over. The angels operate by the book, and they expect us to also. I don't want to lose the stature I built up for you snouts. I need to see the pride you got for your colors. Also, we might ride with these guys tonight. Hate to break you off so fast, but you got to know a couple of things. We'll be at the back, keeping up. We got to keep up. They blow a light, we blow a light. They get traffic stopped, we get traffic stopped. Mesa rides like the Blue Angels on Memorial Day. Other charters hate riding with them because they're such fucking road Nazis. Stay 18 inches off the wheel in front of you and stay back. Never ever cross the line of a full patch's front wheel. You pass one of these guys and there will be hell to pay. No one said anything. Rudy said, the fuck? You guys ready? We looked at each other in silence. Even grizzly old pops, who on most days couldn't have given a shit if someone put a bullet in his head, stayed quiet. Rudy was disgusted. Listen, if we're gonna do this, then let's roll over fast and hard as we can. We're gonna get off our motorcycles and walk up to these guys like the baddest pricks on earth. We're gonna look them in the eye and tell them who we are. What comes next, comes next, we'll handle it. Rudy looked directly at me. If you don't have it in you, if you wanna go home right now and tell your neighbor's wife what a badass you are, then let's call this bullshit off and close the case because it has to start right here and right now. Our silence continued, born more of shame than of fear. Jesus hates a pussy, I blurted out. The guys looked at me with the what the fuck look. I said, it's my old partner Chris Bayless's mantra for this kind of situation. He were here, he'd say, so your stomach's in knots and you want to go home. Well, strap your nuts up and go to work. Jesus hates a pussy. You're a fucking undercover. You got to do what you got to do. Come on, guys. I'm nervous as hell, but Jesus hates a pussy, all right? Timmy repeated it quietly. Jesus hates a pussy. Carlos and Pop said it together. Rudy said, all right then, Jesus hates a pussy. Now let's get the fuck out of here. It worked. We rolled out. To call what followed white knuckle would be like calling a severed leg a scratch. 
Rudy put Pops and Timmy both fearless, hard riders at the back and told them to choke it up. Carlos and I held on for dear life. We stayed within two feet of the bike in the front of us and rolled like a chain through a jumbled crank box. Cars flew past at obscene angles as we banked our massive Harleys over the Phoenix freeways. Twilight gave way to nighttime. The lights coagulated in smears of orange, red, and white. The sound ate into our legs and asses and chest, and before we knew it, the machines clicked like they were breathing. It was my first real ride. There was no question about it. We pulled into a Circle K south of Mesa proper. Timmy and Pops went in to buy Red Bulls and cigarettes. Carlos said to no one in particular, Mother lover, we're gonna die on these motherfucking things. You know that, right? It certainly felt that way. The hogs were exhilarating death traps, period. Rudy said, that was better. He patted my thigh. Slats called over and said, that was better. I told him thanks and that we were getting ready to head over. He said the wire was running and the cover team was already in place. They could be at the clubhouse, a thack of pump action shotguns blazing inside 45 seconds. I said cool and hung up. Civilians looked at us from the corners of their eyes. I smiled at one woman and her 10 year old. She turned the boy's shoulders away from the group of scary looking men I was a part of, hustling them towards their car. For the first time in days, I thought of my son, Jack. I'd missed a lot of my kids' milestones. The worst was when I was working a casino bombing case in Vegas and I missed Jack's first steps. Gwen called and I left a message as soon as it happened. I couldn't pick up the phone because I was in a piece of shit undercover car with our suspect and my partner, Vincent Salafu, cruising the Las Vegas fringe looking for a place to have tacos while we talked about a plastic explosives deal. That's the kind of thing I habitually traded the most precious moments of my life for. The woman with the little boy put her car in gear and pulled out into a quick, sharp arc, her axle whining. We hung around We hung around the parking lot a little while longer, and Rudy said, let's go. We all said, Jesus hates a pussy, and we went.